Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. Welcome to another installment of our multi-part review of the Palm Pixie. This video is going to look at WebOS, Palm's uh, really honestly revolutionary web uh, operating system rather for mobile phones that they introduced at CES this past January. Speaking of which, the whole PhoneDog crew, we're going to be out there in January 2010 covering CES from Las Vegas. Stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyway, WebOS this is the second WebOS device, the Pixie. WebOS is the same on the Pre and the Pixie. Uh, there's a lot going for it. I actually think it's the best mobile operating system out there right now. Does that mean that I would buy a WebOS phone as my daily phone? Not necessarily, because uh, there's some things about other operating systems have more support, more applications, more devices and carriers to choose from. But just in terms of what, what the OS can do, I think uh, Palm's WebOS is the absolute best one in the marketplace right now. Why? Well, let's take a look at it running on the Pixie and find out. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with not one, but two Palm Pixies to review and give away. You've seen me using them, you've seen Adriana using them in her videos. The thing about Best Buy Mobile, they got this thing called Walkout Working. When you buy a cell phone there, they'll help you set it up, help you transfer your contacts, help you get, you know, in the case of Palm, your Palm profile set up, all that stuff, help you learn how to work the thing. So if you're like me and you hate using a manual, you can have an actual person Help you get the thing going before you leave the store. Pretty cool. Best Buy, Best Buy Mobile, walkout working, good stuff. Thanks to them for the review models that we're going to give away on the OnePod Bandit. So check that out. But enough of that. Let's get to the phone. WebOS on the Pixie. All right, so let's take a look at WebOS. Um, and again, WebOS to me is really the best mobile operating system on the market because it has, I, I like to think of it as having a combination of Android's um, use of cloud-based services, notifications, syncing with social networks, all that kind of stuff, push email, all that kind of stuff. That combination of that functionality with iPhone's eye candy, plus multitasking, which to, in, in a way that to this point, uh, I think WebOS has the most, you know, functional and stylish multitasking around with its card system. So what does all this mean? Well, let's get into it. Um, I actually just installed the WebOS update so we will go to, where is it? And I'll show you literally as I was about to film this, uh, the 1.3.2 WebOS update became available. So we installed that. And uh, so far it seems like the device is actually running a little teeny tiny bit faster than it was before. Um, you know, it's still not uh, a Qualcomm Snapdragon phone or anything but it does seem to be running just a little bit faster than it was um, prior to this update. So, get another card open here. And so this is what I was talking about with the card system. Uh, the way WebOS works is that everything happens in a card. So multiple instances of the same application, in this case multiple web browser windows, uh, happen in separate cards. Uh, if I want to open up another application like my calendar, it opens up in another card. And there's no limit, theoretically, there's no limit to how many cards you can have. Uh, the limit, you know, the limitations are imposed by the device itself, the hardware, processing power, you know, that kind of thing. So I'll open up the phone and another card. And you've got these cards open, and um, you can, you flick up, and then you can flick through them to get from one to the other, and then there's something you want to see, like if I want to read the Peanuts comic, then, you know, I click in on it, and I can do whatever I want to with it, and I can uh, multi-touch, you know, multi-touch, zoom in, and then let's say I want to go to a different URL, I want to load up phone dog, so there it is, and I'll tap on it, and then while it's loading, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to uh, make a phone call, I don't know what number that is, but uh, you know, while that's going, then I'll go back. I'll go back to Phone Dog, which is still loading up, and that's still loading up. So I'll go back and I'll kill that call because I didn't really actually want to call that person, which is not a valid number anyway. And then I'll flick up to get rid of that card, and so that's basically how it works. Um, and I just think it's it's very elegant. It's very easy to use. Uh, once you kind of get used to the gesture sh system, very intuitive. Uh, some of the applications have gestures within the application. So in the web browser, down here in the gesture area where that little LED 
light is, I can go back on the gest on the gesture area, and that navigates backwards within the application itself. So some of these apps have gestures, you know, kind of within, and then you've got your uh, your gesture area. You know, you can always flick up to get to a card, and then you can also do this kind of little drag wave thing to get the launcher bar from anywhere you want. So if I wanted to launch, well, I want to launch the launcher. And uh, I'm going to get into, I'm going to check my Twitter updates here. So, actually, do I have, I don't know if I, yeah. So I'm going to go to Tweed, which is a Twitter app that I installed. And so that will launch in a new card. And again, the more cards that you have open, you can follow me on Twitter if you want, phone dog underscore Noah. The more cards you have open, uh, the slower things go. But it looks like the uh, this 1.3.2 update has helped things out a little bit. I'd read uh, that it has, and it looks like so far so good. So we'll leave that open, and then I'm actually going to go into the contacts to show you uh, one of the other you know really kind of cool things about. I can't talk and do this at the same time. Let me get to the contacts, and then I'll start talking again. There they are. Uh, one of the other really cool things about WebOS is the whole synergy system and the way that it lets you um, pull contacts from multiple sources and view them together, and uh, the same thing with your calendars and stuff. Okay, and there's no way to really show you this without showing somebody's uh, personal information. I guess I could have made a dummy account, but I'll make a new contact to see. But if you look in these contacts, you can see the, you know, a contact name and then their, uh, their contact photo over here on the right. And some of these contact photos, there's no photo at all. There's just the dummy icon. Some of them have one photo, like Catherine up here at the top or Belinda down there. And then some, like Aaron, have multiple photos. And the multiple photos mean that um, this person's contact entry is linked to multiple profiles. If I go in here on Aaron's profile, um, I don't want to give away his, uh, you know, his account information without him asking me to. But you can see I've got him linked to LinkedIn, to AOL or AIM, to Google Talk and to um, a Google profile. So I've got them set up in multiple profiles here, each one with its own contact information. And so I'll go to you know one of his profiles and I can unlink it, set it as a primary, or delete it. And then I can also link to him, I can go through and link different profiles you know, that I already have in here together uh, with his profile. And really it's just a nice way to manage multiple profiles for multiple contacts, people who have you know LinkedIn and Facebook and Yahoo and Google and whatever else, and they have IM addresses and multiple email addresses for home and work and all those kinds of things. Uh, it's just, you know, a really nice way to manage all of that stuff. Now you can see as I'm doing this in the contacts um, app, I've got a little notification at the bottom. This is one of the other things I love about the way WebOS works is when you get a notification of a new event, whether it's an email message or a calendar event or, you know, one of the other apps letting you know something's going on or your music player's running or whatever it is, it's just kind of an unobtrusive icon down there in the bottom. You can click on it to get more information. And I can either go to my mail to check it out, or I can just swipe it out of the way. So let's, uh, let's go to the launcher bar here again, and we'll launch the music player. 8 gigs of internal storage. If you want to see more on how the music player works, you can check out uh, the video we did just on the multimedia performance of the pre. But uh, we'll go into songs, and we'll just pick a song here. Battles, B plus T. So I got a bunch of cards open. Might be going a little slow. Slowly, a little slowly. Yeah, definitely lagging a little bit because of all the cards I have open. So we'll get rid of the Contacts app. And you can see a little lag there. Get rid of some of these web windows. All right, so now my music's playing, and we'll 
go back here to uh, Tweed, and you can see I've got the music icon on the bottom, and I can tap on it, and I can see the song, and I can get a little preview of what's going on there, and I can pause it, or I can skip ahead, turn it down over there on the side. So now we'll keep uh, doing this, and I'll say shooting web OS video, and I'll tweet that, and then, oh whoops, I didn't tweet that, I searched for it. So, instead of retyping it, I'll select all, and... I will cut, and I'll do a new tweet, and I'll paste. So there you go, copying and pasting works well. Should we add a, uh, a photo? Let's add a photo. Oh, I need to configure. All right, I don't want to do that. Well, let's just tweet that then. Tweet. Sending tweet, little notification at the bottom. And that'll stay up there. And we'll go into my calendar here and look at the monthly view. And you can see in that last, uh, let's turn the volume down so you can hear me. In that last view, the daily view, you can see I had calendar entries in two different colors. I had a lunch date in green and a call in uh, that peach color. Layered calendars on the pre. Um, I just accidentally tapped while I was trying to point my thumb. I tapped, which started a new entry. But uh, I'll show this to you here. So we'll call this dummy entry. And we'll go to the information pane. And so you can choose uh, what you can have multiple calendars shown on the same interface. So layered calendars from different sources. So, and so you can see when I'm. I'm adding this entry, if I tap on the Google button over there, I can choose which calendar I want it to, to live on. So I can have multiple calendars as managed by my Palm profile. Uh, several Google calendars, local calendar, you know, my Palm, or not local, rather, my Palm pro profile calendar. If you use Exchange, you can hook up your Exchange calendars, all that stuff. So it's really nice. Um, and so we'll go back. And now I've got my dummy entry there. But you can see I've got the multiple, you know, this one's from my personal, that one's from a phone dog calendar. Go to the weekly view, you can see the same thing. Monthly view as well, you can see monthly view, I've got the shading where I've got an event going on. Go back to that weekly view again, and I skipped too quickly before, and you can see I've got, you know, at a glance, where do I have an event on each calendar? Green being my personal, peach being the phone dog calendar. So, uh, you know, pretty nifty there as far as the layered calendars go. Now, we'll go back to, let's just uh, refresh, see if anything's happened on Twitter. Oh, what's up, Ewan? Long time no see. So you can see my music still playing there. So we'll stop that, and we'll get rid of it, and then we'll uh, go up, go to the launcher.